Hello and good morning everyone. So uh, in this chapter 4, uh, regarding the human response to noise, we're going to have the virtual class. In this course, CEB 20403, so um, we're going to cover four topics, which is the, about, uh, the noise topic, the sound topics, uh, the vibrations, and also control. For noise, um, we've already covered the source of noise, uh, which consists the natural environmental uh, source and also man-made environmental source, uh, such as the transportation factories, construction site, um, domestic building, and uh, the public places and products. We have already covered these um, effects of effects of noise. All right. Uh, we haven't covered the measurement. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, we haven't covered the regulation too. And, but then we already covered physics of noise. We learned about frequency, wavelength, period, uh, the period of the, uh, the sound traveling, uh, amplitude, speed, intensity, and also source directionality. And we've already also, uh, we've also covered about the room acoustic all right so we covered this uh, regarding absorptions reflections reverberations diffractions refractions and diffusions so today uh, still in us uh, still in uh, topic sound uh, we going to learn about the hearing the anatomy of your ear disorder of the ear and also hearing evaluation Okay, the learning outcomes for this class, at this end of this class, at least students are able to want to explain how the ear work acoustically. Okay, secondly, you need to discuss the functions of the outer, middle and in, inner ear. Uh, have knowledge of hearing disorder. Discuss the main types of hearing impairment. Analyze a basic audiogram. Explain how noise exposure can cause hearing loss. Our ear anatomy is divided to three parts, which is the this part, the outer side of it, the inner side of it, and uh, sorry, the middle ear, and also this is the this part is the e inner ear. So outside we have this pinna alright pinna or we call this optical pinna the function of pinna is to collect and concentrate sound energy it is actually separated from the hearing organ and it's connected with meters alright this is the acoustic meters alright this meters are also the ear canal alright this is the essential this is a very important hearing apparatus because it actually brings all right it brings the sound into to your eardrums so uh, when it's blocked this when this meters block by wax or ear plug wax is your tight layer so the ear sensitivity can be considerable reduced so when it's functioning normal it will pass the sound wave across this full audible range but it tends to amplify to some extent uh, with a frequency with a frequency of region 3 kilohertz at the end of it at the end of the matters we have this tympanum or we call it as a eardrum this is the eardrum all right um, this eardrum At the end of this eardrum, it's connected to these small ossicles, small bones that we call ossicles. And the names of the individual uh, bones is malus, incus, and also um, steps. So they actually join together to form a set of levers with one end of the malus is contact to the eardrum. So one, as eardrums move, when it causes the response, it's move 
all right uh, response from the sound wave and it's smooth this movement actually transmitted to the malice all right to this malice all right it's transmitted to malice and um, yeah it's transmitted to the malice all right through the eardrum so as the eardrum move with the malice and then excuse me uh, and in of steps it forms a boundary with with the inner ear all right steps is the steps is the last one that is the boundaries of the middle ear so Although the middle ear is normally isolated from the atmosphere, the eustachian, 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 eustachian tubes, this is the eustachian tubes, all right, uh, sorry, this is the eustachian group. This one is a function of the eustachian, eustachian tubes is to join it to the throat uh, and this open during swallowing to allow the pressure inside the middle ear to become equal to atmospheric pressure outside the inner ear is full of okay this inner inner ear here is full of fluid and the function of the ossicles is to improve the efficiency of each efficient with with which the energy of the sound wave is transmitted is transmitted um, to the fluid and this means that we can we can sensitive to very quiet sound but when loud noise is present it can be disadvantaged for energy to be transmitted to the efficiency of the process and thus to some extent to uh, extend protect the inner ear from damage this inner ear detect the movement um, detect the movement and it's important in maintaining balance cochlea here is double to coil up into snail shape these tubes are joined to the apex of the snail and based on one connect via the over window of the step bones while the base while the base of other ends is the round window they are separated from the vesicular membranes, which is made to vibrate by the incoming sound wave. Different parts of the vesicular membranes vibrate in response to different incoming frequencies, and these vibrations is detected by the hair cells within the membrane. And these and this, um, cells, all right, the cells actually uh, stimulate the nerve. Sending the uh, ending to send the electrical pulse to parts of the brain which process auditory information. So uh, the initial question just now is like what caused hearing impairment? How do we measure it? How can we decide it if a sound is likely to harm our hearing? So types of impairment. All right. If it's involved, if the impairment involve your outer ear and middle ear we call it as the conductive and if it's that cause in your inner ear we call it as sensory neural conductive hearing apartment uh, impairment sorry uh, the ear canal all right this is your ear canal because of its relative exposure to the outside world, it's common victim of disease, noise, and other disorder. So this conductive hearing loss is often only mild. It is never worse than moderate impairment. So mainly, if it's involved the conductive hearing impairment, it's just a temporary or mild hearing loss. All right. So, uh, the hearing impairment normally, okay, you got the ears infections uh, when uh, normally swimmers will get the ears infections, like bacteria that cause it become inflammations on their ear canal, all right. Um, the ear fungus, um, sometimes you have this 
uh, autochlorosis, a progressive degenerative con uh, conditions of temporal bone, and uh, contact to the mertatis of the ear canal, and also the foreign body in ear. Sensorineural hearing loss. This hearing loss is probably is quite severe. All right, uh, or sometimes it, uh, it will actually uh, include a total death. All right, this is very dangerous. Um, this hearing loss actually, uh, which caused by the uh, which caused by the light, uh, which caused by the vestibular cochlear nerve, uh, damage on that area on the inner ear. All right. So the most sensory hearing loss is due to the poor hair cell function. The hair cell function sensory receptor located in the corti actually may be because of the abnormal at birth or damage during the lifetime of an individual. For example, uh, the presbycusis, all right, death due to the lost perception of high tones. Right, normally like orang tua semua ya. Uh, noise induced hearing loss, uh, NIHL. It's a very too loud concert or explosions, you know, uh, and also uh, deafness genes. How are we going to quantify the hearing loss? The severity of this hearing loss is measured by degree of the loudness. All right, and uh, of the loudness of the sound before detecting by an individual. All right, so you test, okay, test this, the ears of individual by introducing the loudness of the sound. All right, uh, hearing loss may be ranked as mild, okay, for adults between 25 to 40 decibel. Uh, for the children, it's probably between 15 to 40. Um, all right, the severe is around 70 to 90 decibels and profound like 90 decibels for to greater. So, uh, okay, so how we quantify it? We do the audiometry, audiometric test. So this audiometric procedures where um, the tester like the person that you examine, like this woman, uh, they actually have to wear this, all right, earphones. So that earphone, headphones, they send the pure tones, all right, the pure tones to the ear at the audible level. So it will decrease, decrease, okay, the tester, this, this woman, this woman, the tester, um, will decrease the level until the subject can't hear it all right you can't hear it anymore and then they repeat the same as uh, the repeats and same other frequencies repeat it back and uh, the normal hearing is called zero decibel hearing level normally after you have done the audiometric test to the uh, to the employer onto uh, the employee so here are the here are the graph that you can uh, plot it so uh, this is the example of the audiogram uh, of normal hearing okay um, you can see that uh, the the person that you tested have been tested for the different frequencies here all right, so the frequencies is increased, is increased, okay, you, you repeat it and you increase one, uh, increase from 125 hertz towards to 8 kilohertz. So, um, this is, uh, and the y-axis is a hearing loss. So, that, and this graph, it shows that um, the left ears and the right, the left ears ear and the right ear, all right, uh, doesn't have any hear loss. All right, uh, it's, it's almost constant. All right, you can see it's almost constant, not fluctuating at all. Um, and the hearing loss visible is zero.
Okay, in this graph, actually, in this audiogram uh, graph, it shows the impairment of the hearing. Okay, when you see that, uh, the left and the left and also the right ears here are fluctuating. All right, uh, sometimes it can hear. Uh, all right, sometimes uh, it can't hear. So, and then with with very high very uh, high frequency it can't hear anything uh, so it drops like this the right ears so it shows that the person that you test um, having impairment of the hearing all right so the noise induced hearing loss what cause of it all right so normally it causes uh, due to damage uh, the cause of it because of it's being uh, the person or employee someone that um, have been exposed to very high concentrations like 90 decibels uh, 90 decibels for eight hours all right you have to do machines okay uh, handling machines for eight hours working or uh, with 19 decibels without wearing any earplug then it will cause uh, INHL or even like with 96 decibel uh, for two hours or for two hours might cause damage to your hearing and um, and higher it is like one 105 decibel is the exposure only 15 minutes and in law in safety and health law OSHA you are only allowed to expose to um, to expose to noise uh, for the max of 114 decibel that is you are okay that is cut off point all right okay noise dose uh, all right so uh, sometimes we use this noise dosimeter all right uh, to to measure the noise dose all right uh, uh, response to noise dose depends on the sound energy received so to calculate the energy uh, the formula is energy equivalent to the intensity and you times with the time so according to the uh, international organization standardization iso they recommended that an equal energy rules where three decibel increase in level half the permitted exposure time so these are the permitted noise dose all right eight hours you only permitted 90 decibel so when it's when when the noise getting higher all right when the noise getting higher uh, the permitted exposure time is decrease all right so as conclusions the conductive the conductive hearing loss, for example, the osteochlorosis perforated eardrum. All right. So the sensory neural hearing loss is the presbycrisis and also the NIHL. So NIHL is actually related to the sound energy, uh, which related the concept of the noise dose. All right. I think that's all. Thank you.